outside that row. We see car number 50, L of Louis Bilal, trying to make his way into line. That's the John Tangway Company, p j Tire, j and Machine, Sweeps Disposal, Building Unlimited, and Freight. Looking back in the starting field, we see the 94X, the Morgan in White, CB Fabrication and Speed Shop, sponsored number 94X, also sponsored by BM Motors, it's Brian Jones out of Norwich, Connecticut. Next in line on the inside is car number 50X for Mike Capri out of New Haven. The Auto Center, Louis D's, Town & Country, and r, r Glass Buick. Outside that row is car number 78X. That's John Hackman Connell out of Madison. The statewide recovery, King Fish Emporium, Wolf Garage, Aaronson's Mobile, Ken's Auto Body, and Free. Father back in the field is car number 17, the sponsor wanted entry for Dave Zemke. That's car number 17 out of Guilford, Connecticut. Alongside is the 09. We yet to get a driver's name for that automobile. Side by side. The top drivers take the green flag, and it looks as though John Bumpner has the edge heading into turn number one. Kenny Cassidy in tow with car number 11 runs second. The battle's for third as Gary Preble in the 44, the 36 of Howard Gernhardt, and the 33 of Tracy Kurnazic all run under a blanket. The field spreads out rather rapidly around the one-third mile oval. Side-by-side -side action, the order of the day in the middle of the pack. They swap a little paint into turn number one. Everybody stays pointed in the right direction as they slip, slide around. Tires squealing. They smoke them a bit through the turn, but John Faulkner looks to add to his advantage as the 0-3 has about a five-car length advantage over the entire field. Smoke on the backstretch. Joe Corrado off the speedway in turn three. Looks as though he's deemed far enough away from the racing surface as we continue under green flag conditions with two laps shown as complete. Now it's lap three shown. Finished, and John Falk continues as the pace setter. Trouble in turn four, the 09 goes around. He blows a couple of donuts. He stays on the throttle. Let's see if we can stay under green, but unfortunately, the caution flag being shown to the field as the 09. Three down, 27 to go. Carano gets caught in the pits as the green is out quickly. Again, it's Faulkner in command. Kenny Cassidy looking to run him down with the 11. Gary Preble with a fine showing this afternoon. Runs in the third spot. Howard Gernot in the 36, also coming to the front. Runs in the number four position in Tracy Kurnazic with the double zero X of Bobby Smith all running up front. Check out the number 54 through the turns. You'll see him left that lift the left front tire. That means the car not handling good enough to get up to some real good racing speed. As he has trouble developing right in front of him as Gary Cundy in trouble with the 51X slides to the infield. Cundy looks to get the automobile pointed back to the racetrack, but he's out in the boondocks. But unfortunately, we have debris up in turn number four, and that's going to put the field settles down a bit through turns three and four. We can anticipate the green, and we get it as Faulkner stands on the throttle off turn number four. Kenny Cassidy staying right there, not being shaken loose this time with the 11, as Gary Preble and Howard Gernot battle for the third place honors. Tracy Kurnazic in the 33 down on the inside grabs off the fifth spot. Plenty of bumper banging through the turns as Bud Kenny wants to charge his way to the front of the field. Slip sliding, Louis Belial in trouble with the 50L, tags the Opco barrier. Mike Holdridge off the racetrack. The OOX of Bobby Smith, the O5X of Jeff Irwin for the green flag this time by. John Faulkner on the inside. Kenny Cassidy on the outside, both heat winners earlier this afternoon. Both top runners in this strictly stock division. A little wide off the turn, sends Cassidy slip sliding momentarily. He recovers quite nicely. Able to draw back in front of Howard Gernot's number 36. But look at the problem on the back stretch is Howard Gernot running into problems, slowing right in the middle of the racetrack. Tough break as the left rear tire goes down on the number 36. He's looking for an exit off the speedway. Now brings it down off the banking to the inside. 
remainder of the field now begins to spread it out once again with John Faulkner able to regain his advantage he was enjoying before that last caution period. Gernhardt heads to the infield. The rest of the field stays on the throttle as we stay on the green. Trouble in turn number two. Gary Cundy in the 51X. Scott Cook in the 26 make contact, both cars. They wind him up once again, dead even off that fourth turn. Side by side, they battle into turn number one. John Faulkner takes over control once again. This time, Tracy Kurnazik in the 33 takes over the runner-up monitors as he gets by the inside of Kenny Cassidy's number 11. Mike Holdridge, the man on the move with car number 82 has moved up, battling for the fourth place honors. He's on the inside of Gary Preble running for that particular spot. Preble a bit deep in the turn, gives way as Holdridge now sets his sights on the outside of Kenny Cassidy's number 11. Holdridge works the outside, gets by Cassidy on the back straightaway. He's got a lot of ground to cover if he wants to catch up with the top two cars, as John Faulkner and Tracy Kurnazic have opened up a little breathing room over the remainder of the field. Faulkner now looking to pull away from Karnazic's number 33. Less than a car leg separate the top two competitors as Holdridge looks to eat into the lead. Holdridge is definitely closing in, reeling in the back bumper of Tracy Karnazic's number 33. Let's see if he can keep up the charge. This time by, they'll be down to complete lap number 13, and Holdridge is definitely closing in. Battle for fourth is Kenny Cassidy in the 11, and Gary Preble in the 44 continue to run side by side. While back in the back, the action is hot and heavy. Looks as though Bud Keeney could be in trouble with the 77X. The halfway marker is coming out. 15 down, 15 to go. As his 30 lap feature is in its second half, the second segment. Time is running out. The top three cars have moved away from the field, leaving all doubt as the top three will battle amongst themselves for supremacy in this 30-lap event. Currently being led by John Faulkner in the 03. Tracy Kurnazic in the 33 and Mike Coldridge in the 82. Bumper tag being played through the turns. Battle for the fourth spot between Gary Preble, Kenny Cassidy, and the 27 CT of Eddie Reed Sr. continues to wage. Looks as though the 09 running into temporary problems has recovered. He gets back out on the racetrack. As Brian Jones goes around in turn number one with the 94X, that's going to bring out the caution flag. A little brake test, folks, is all it's about. Go. Autumn excitement for the Strictly Stock Division about to continue. Once again, it's John Faulkner out front. But look who's waiting in the wings. Tracy Kurnasek and Mike Holdridge. And not necessarily in that order as they continue to battle side by side off that fourth turn. Holdridge had the edge at the line, continues to get by Kurnasek for the runner-up honors. Now sets his sights on the old three of Faulkner, but we've got caution out of the speedway once again. Dash for the cash. John Faulkner on the inside, Mike Holdridge on the outside, then it's Tracy Kurnazic and Kenny Cassidy in row two. Green flag is out, we're back underway. Once again, Faulkner, first on the throttle, has the edge. He's been quick on the restarts all afternoon long. This one, 
the same as he's able to regain the lead with Mike Holdridge in hot pursuit with car number 82. with two wins earlier in the season. Would like to pick it three this afternoon if he can make it to the checkered flag first. It'll be 20 down, 10 to go when they cross the stripe this time by. Time definitely on his side if the setup stays the same. As Mike Holdridge, up until this point, has been unable to close the gap. Tracy Kurnazek continues the battle in the third spot with count number 33. Continues side by side, paint swapping, fender bending action. John Faulkner continues to set sail out front with car number 03. 22 laps posted on the scoreboard and counting. And up until this point, Mike Holdridge has been at least a car length or so behind. It doesn't appear that Holdridge has the horsepower necessary to catch up with the leader. But again, he could be playing the waiting game until the closing few circuits to make his move into the number one position. Holdridge also with two wins to his credit this year definitely knows how to get the job accomplished. So don't count him out until that checkered flag flies. Six short circuits to go. That breaks down to two miles of all-out racing. The field stays on the green. The five to go being posted from the flag stand this time by. Trouble in turn two. Scott Cook goes around with the 09 and the 26. Cook able to refire his automobile, but it looks as though the 09 remains stalled up in turn number two. Green quickly back out. Dude, the 82, Mike Oldridge in trouble. Looks as though he must have missed the shift, folks. With just a few laps to go, he finds himself buried in the middle of the pack. Tough break for the 1991 champion. As with only a few laps remaining, it looks as though he won't get the job done as the number 54 of Teddy Hollow loses a tire up in turn number four. And the catch fence, once again, does its job. Keeps the tire inside the racetrack in the 54. Slides to a halt off turn number four up against the Omco barrier. Bring the field down to Dan Cordaway's green flag, which is already out and waving from the flag stand. Wasting no time, Faulkner regains the lead. Maintains the number one position right ahead of the 33 of Tracy Kurnazik. Joe Corrado in trouble with the zero on the outside. Looking to get down off the speedway. Does indeed pull it to the infield and we stay under green. 26 laps shown as complete. Next time today, we'll be down to just a three lap dash. That works out to one mile of competition on the one third mile oval. As John Faulkner once again maintaining the number one position directly ahead of the 33 of Kurnazik. Meanwhile, back in the pack, look at Mike Holdridge come alive with the 82. Problem up in turn three, Eddie Reed Sr. Oh! The 05X of Jeff Irwin and the 78X of John Connell making some heavy contact, folks. The yellow flag is brought back out of those drivers. Up in turn three, making some strong contact, but Eddie Reed able to drive away. Ace car ducks off. The field is side by side, anticipating the green. The yellow flag comes back out. We're not quite sure why. Some of the drivers already on the throttle. Yellow is out. Once again, heavy on the throttle. They wind him up off the fourth turn. Green flag is waving, and John Falk once again pulls out in front of Tracy Kurnazik's number 33 and the 11 of Kenny Cassidy. 
moves into the third spot ahead of Mike Aldridge in the 82. Time running out. Two to go. The popsicle sticks her out. Last two times around the block, folks. The 03, John Faulkner, has been the leader from right the drop of the green. The white flag is waving this time, by Last time around the block. Eddie Reed, senior, in trouble with the 70, 27 CT. Now regains control at the back of the pack, but as you can see, last time around, folks. That's all she wrote as they're heading for Victory Lane. John Faulkner driving the Fitchville Auto Engine Works Monson 03. First across the stripe. You're out there right from the beginning. You had a bunch of cars chasing you down, but you were able to stand tall and stay out there. Any particular secret? No, Joe, just kept away. Kept away. There's a lot of good competition up against me here. You know, you had the 1991 track champion alongside one time Tracy Kanazic, one of the upcoming rookies, another time. And you had different drivers from time to time, but yet you managed to get the edge at the drop of the green. Was that what you were looking to pay attention to? Yep, pay attention to the drop of the green. You know, you picked up three wins this year. 1991 is just about concluded. What's on uh, the shelves for 1992? Uh, I think we're going to go late model next year. A full-blown late model. Not a there bad way go. to go. Yep, there you go. Well, John, again, congratulations. A nice run this afternoon.